Hi, Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to another installment in our Chapter 6 Lecture 6 series. Our conversation for this video is all about the different factors that affect bone growth and bone development, topics that we've been talking about in previous videos. So essentially, we're going to see factors such as exercise and hormones and our diet affecting our bone growth and development. We've already talked about the benefits of exercise to increasing the density of your bone. So if you're exercising and you're doing lots of weight bearing activities, you're increasing your muscle mass. So this is gonna trigger an increase in the bone density. So you'll have more appositional growth. So you make a thicker, stronger skeleton um, with exercise. Hormones are gonna play an important role here too. We kind of referenced them when we were talking about osteogenesis and how penetration of the blood vessel into the diaphysis and later the epiphyses creating those ossification centers um, was significant because it brought hormone signals with it. Hormones are by definition chemical messengers that are released by one tissue, travel through the bloodstream and then cause changes to happen in another cell in the body. We will see hormones involved in bone growth, including growth hormone. Growth hormone will trigger the increase of protein synthesis. So think of those collagen fibers that are important for the strength and flexibility of our bone. It's gonna trigger an increase of mitosis. So you have those osteogenitor cells that are mitotically dividing to make more osteoblasts. And that then is gonna increase our cell growth as well. We have um, released from our thyroid gland a group of hormones collectively called thyroxins. Oh, excuse me. Notice each of our hormones has also a corresponding abbreviation, so make sure you're paying attention to that as well. So looking back up at growth hormone, the abbreviation there was GH. When we talk about thyroxins, these are abbreviated as T3 and T4. These hormones are, in general terms, increasing cellular metabolism across the board in the body. But here in our bone, that means increasing the activity of our osteoblasts as they are going through that process of maintaining, uh, excuse me, of making and releasing bony matrix. Collectively, these two hormones are important in increasing, uh, or excuse me, maintaining our normal activities at that epiphyseal cartilage until puberty. Remember, our epiphyseal cartilage has to increase and then we make more bone and then we increase our cartilage and we make more bone. The epiphyseal cartilage, remember, is kind of like our growth plate. It's that area where the bone is still elongating. And so, of course, that's happening up until about puberty. With puberty, we get the release of sex hormones. And these sex hormones are going to be triggering those epiphyseal closures but they do it in a different way, which leads to um, you know, some of those differences that we see in adult females and adult males. Adult females are typically shorter than adult males because that release of estrogen at puberty is gonna create a faster epiphyseal closure compared with testosterone. So very often by age like 14 or 15, women have achieved their um, adult size Whereas you don't typically expect men to reach their adult height until maybe 18, 19, 20, you know, going into those early 20s. So they're uh, continuing to grow throughout those late teenage years and females typically are not. And that has to do with the difference in how estrogen and testosterone talk to our bone cells. Remember, epiphyseal closure is talking about when that epiphyseal cartilage gets completely ossified and turned into bone, forming that epiphyseal line. Once that cartilage is turned into the line, then growth, uh, increase in length, that kind of growth has stopped. Okay, additional hormones are gonna be involved in calcium regulation, and we'll have a whole video just to discuss this. This is our really our only negative feedback mechanism that we get to study this semester. So we're gonna see three different hormones involved here. The first one that I've listed for you is parathyroid hormone, which is abbreviated PTH. This one will increase osteoclast activity, releasing calcium into the bloodstream. Calcitonin does the opposite. 
calcitonin is going to decrease osteoclast activity, causing the bone to store that calcium instead of release it. And then calci excuse me, calcitriol um, is going to help the parathyroid hormone. Now the calcitriol is converted from colcalciferol, which is the other name for vitamin D3. Remember, you're getting vitamin D3 produced by a healthy integumentary system. Calcitriol is going to tell the small intestine cells to absorb calcium from your diet. So we've taught before that having a healthy um, integumentary system is important for a healthy skeleton, and here's that connection. The final bit that's involved in our bone growth and development would, of course, be our diet. So we've talked about calcium salts being an important component for the hardness of our bone. That calcium is, of course, coming from our diet. So calcium and phosphorus and other minerals, such as magnesium, iron, fluoride, and manganese, are all going to be required from our diet in order to have a healthy bony matrix. And then we'll see that vitamins are going to be involved in several of our processes as well. So we have a whole list, and we'll look at each of these individually. Okay, so starting with our vitamin D3, we mentioned it previously, so this is at least the third time that we've talked about it. Another name for vitamin D3 is the colcalciferol. Um, this is going to be important in the formation of calcitriol, the hormone we talked about a few minutes ago, which is going to tell the small intestine to absorb calcium from your diet. So you can be eating calcium, but if you don't have vitamin D3, then you're not absorbing it. Cal uh, vitamin C is going to be important for collagen synthesis. So that's talking about, you know, those collagen fibers that are making the, um, the bony matrix flexible. And then also they're involved in osteoblast differentiation. So again, osteoblast cells are involved in making that bony matrix. Vitamin A is also important in increasing osteoblast activity. So this is gonna be critical for children who are doing a lot of bone growth. Both of vitamins K and B12 are gonna be important for proper protein synthesis in healthy bones. So again, protein synthesis here might be talking about collagen fibers. This might be talking about other proteins that are important for the health of the cells. So clearly these are all components, these are all important vitamins that we're getting from our diet that are going to be contributing to a healthy um, bone. And that's it for now.